So, last one. I want to do the update as well. And again, I'm a cheater. So I figured out how to put in the put right here, just to show you. So it's pretty much like the delete and the get. We have an ID in the end, and uh, we have a way for us to call a function called update inside the controller. So let's have a look at that function. Now again, I've done it a bit different than what the full stack autoscaffolds for us, but it's the same idea. And this is very, very basic way to do it. And as we start making more complex objects, we'll probably have to change this. But I wanna show you one of the ways that we can do it using Mongoose. Now, the first thing you should notice is that now we actually start to also use the requester's body, okay? And that's the same place that we pulled out data down here when we created something new. So I don't wanna go into details with that again. But we're going to use that again. Now, one thing we want to make sure is that we do not send an ID now when we do the update. I don't want to risk that you by mistake send a new ID than what the cat should actually have. So the first thing I do before we do anything is if I find an ID, I delete it right away. Because if I end up having the ID of one here, you'll overwrite the actual ID in the Mongoose database. And that's bad. I said Mongoose, I meant Mongo database. And that's really bad. So we don't want to, we want to make sure that anybody who by mistake sends an ID, we start by just deleting that ID, okay, in the body. Now, the ID from the request params anyway, we are going to use that. So we're not going to delete that one. So we're going to use another type of schema request that says find one and update. So we want to find an object and update it using the request params ID. Now, what, we else, what else do we use? We use the information that's sent in the body because that's what we want to update. And then we add one more parameter here saying, do I want to return the updated cat or do I want to return the cat before it's updated? I'll try and explain that in a second, but it's pretty much saying that if I set this to false, like this, I'm going to actually return the cat before it's updated, okay? If I set this to true, I'm going to return a cat after it's updated. So let's let's see the differences here. Let me set it to false as a beginning. That means that when I'm done updating the cat, I'm actually still going to send the cat before the update actually happened. Yeah. Then we do the response 200, everything goes well, and we're going to return the cat after, uh, sorry, before it's updated, notice that. And then we're going to catch an error if the error happens, blah, blah, blah. You've done that a thousand times, so I don't want to explain that again. Let's try and see this postman. Step one, is my ground actually running? Yes, ground looks happy. Let's go into postman. First of all, I'm going to try and get all my cats. And here we have Pearl, the lovely cat. We're going to add that here and we're going to convert this from a get request into a put request. Again, notice that it's the same way we did it with the get and the delete, but we just changed the method that we're using from get delete to put, to tell um, our uh, REST API that we're actually going to update something now. Okay, let's go into the body and say, we want to do something here again. It's a roar, it's a JSON, and we want to change something here for our beautiful cat. And let's change the name of Pearl from being Pearl to being um, Janko with a C. And since this is set up now, I should be able to say send and I get a response back saying, Pearl, what the, I just updated the name. Why isn't that, why hasn't it changed? Well, let's do a get request. And remember the ID didn't change. So let's do a send here again. And now, wait, wait a second. It actually did change it. But the response I got just wasn't the updated version, but the version before the update, right? Now, I don't want that to happen. I wanted to actually send the version after the update. And that was why I had to change it in here to true. So now it's actually going to send the updated version and not the version before the update. Well, that's a lot of talk, Lars. What does that mean? Try to work around with this and you'll figure it out. Let's do the same thing, the exact same thing. I'm going back to my postman here and let's just start up by getting all cats just to see that it actually um, reseeded the database. Okay, Pearl is back, Janice is back. Let's this time change Janice and do the put again. 
Let's go to the body, to the raw data. Say it's a JSON application, uh, sorry, it's JSON data. Do a new name here. And let's change Janice's name into Django this time. And do a send. And notice this time I actually get the updated cat back. That's the difference. So the true false value there actually decides, do you want to return the actual updated cat? Or do you just want to return the cat before the update value? That's it. So now we can also update a cat. That's the full CRUD setup for our controller. And now we can actually move on to refactoring, cleaning up the code, and then we'll start to build our real endpoints.